The first major leg of the Chang hard fork is officially upon us. As a part of today's video, I'm breaking down where we stand from a timeline perspective. We'll also dive into who has to upgrade. And of course, that includes SPOs, exchanges, as well as dApps we've already built on Cardano. And then I want to briefly talk about governance with the fact that the Cardano Constitutional Committee also has to be prepared before we actually see the hard fork take effect. That said, let's talk about it. What's up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. As I just mentioned there, we've got the Cardano node version 9.1.0, which is officially live, bringing the first installment of the Chang hard fork, introducing governance for the most decentralized blockchain right now, which of course is none other than Cardano. We've got quite a bit to cover here, but as you're making your way in here, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, breaking down everything in Cardano, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me as it pertains to the Chang hard fork, then make sure to leave a comment down below. Now we've got a update here, which was released not too long ago by the official Intersect team. And this basically breaks down the release of the brand new node version, which I want to walk through. There's also the release of a Conway Genesis file, which I want to highlight there as well. Really interesting stuff that we're seeing there. And then I want to jump into the timeline. So we'll take a look at the readiness factors and then exactly where we stand right now. So as it states here, the final version to bring on-chain decision-making to Cardano is officially here. As with all hard forks, Cardano upgrades when the community is ready. So just in case you're new to the channel or maybe you just missed my prior videos, I'll leave the link to the governance playlist, which basically breaks down and explains what the Ching hard fork is and exactly everything that we know about it so far. Now, if it's your first time going through a hard fork here within the Cardano community, Keep in mind that we don't upgrade until everybody's ready, which means the community, right, or SPOs, as well as the biggest exchanges based off of liquidity. Now, let's jump back in here very quickly. I'll leave the link to this down below. This is the official GitHub repository owned by the Intersect member-based organization, or the MBO, highlighting Cardano node version 1.0, which now requires a Conway Genesis file at startup. Now I'm going to highlight exactly what's actually in the current Genesis file, which is very interesting. We've got some different fee um, related um, items, but then we've also got some items touching on governance and then the actual Cardano constitution. In terms of tech specs, there are some updates here. So you're now, if you're running a node, going to have to upgrade to provide at least 24 gigs of RAM and then at least 200 gigabytes of free storage where the team at IOG or the Intersect MBO is now recommending at least 250 gigs for future growth. Now they've got some documentation down there at the, at the bottom. And then an interesting piece here is who's actually signed off on the approval of this latest release node version. So we've got the Cardano head of engineering who's on board the head of product. We haven't gotten the green light yet from the test engineers or the performance engineers. That's actually a portion that we have to um, review together as a community but we are hoping to get that green light. And then last but not least, we've got the site reliability engineer and the release engineer who both have actually checked off on this. Again, I'll leave the link to the Conway Genesis file down below. It's a simple JSON or formatted data file. And at the very top here, we've got some interesting information with respect to the pool voting thresholds. We've also got a portion here surrounding DREP voting thresholds. And then we've got a piece here, which breaks down the Plutus V3 cost model. Again, keep in mind that with Plutus V3, there's going to be an introduction of new features, new capabilities, and also, of course, a new pricing structure, new pricing model. At the very bottom here, we've got the script hash for all seven representatives of the current standing ICC or the Interim Constitutional Committee. Again, I've broken down what their job is. It's basically just to make sure that any proposed governance actions fall within the um, bounds or the rules of the active Cardano constitution. Now I'm going to provide more content breaking down the actual constitution as we've already begin to see um, more iterations of it. Uh, but I really want to make sure that number one, I understand it, but the number two, you're able to understand it as well and hopefully get some value from that and just be prepared, right, for governance. So again, really cool to start to see a lot of this falling together. The next thing I want to jump into is the Chang hard fork and just briefly recapping, you know, what's expected from it and exactly why it's actually labeled or called the Chang hard fork. So it states here, 
as a part of the first two upgrades, which right now we're about to upgrade to the first portion, um, chain upgrade number one will deploy a set of governance features to Cardano, which will basically allow for the Cardano ecosystem to enter a technical bootstrapping phase as described in SIP number 1694. So this lays down the groundwork or the foundation for us to be able to implement governance. Now, what actually turns this all on is the second upgrade, also known as chain upgrade number two, which we don't have a timeline yet for. As soon as we get done with number one, then we should be able to get more information about upgrade number two. This moves the ecosystem or the protocol out of the technical bootstrapping phase into a full-fledged feature, again, which introduces SIP number 1694 for on-chain governance with full DRA participation in all of the available governance actions um, basically being um, open for anybody to use. Again, check out my other videos breaking down um, what those seven governance actions are. Now, I want to take a moment here to pay a little bit of a tribute here to um, Bill Chang, who's actually the person that the Chang hard fork is named after, where it states here, the upgrade honors Bill Chang, who sadly passed away in 2022. Bill was a pioneer in the Cardano governance um, portion at IOG, and his thinking contributed significantly to Voltaire's conceptualization. So um, our thoughts are definitely with Bill and his family, um, but it's really good to be able to see IOG um, put out a tribute such as this to a member of their own. We saw one very similar with the Vassal Heart Fork. Um, and so again, it seems to be a theme here with IOG really trying to um, make sure that a lot of people that have contributed to the protocol don't fall behind or don't become forgotten. Now, if you're enjoying today's video so far, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by DAP Central and you want more content just like this, consider subscribing to the channel. And last but not least, if you have any questions, then make sure to leave them down below. I am also a single stake pool operator. So if you'd like to support me on my mission to educate the broader Cardano community, then consider delegating with the official DAP Central stake pool, which is stake pool ticker DAPP. Right now, you'll earn your traditional ADA rewards in addition to three other tokens, given the fact that I am a partner pool for the Matera ISPO, the Sarah ISPO, and the ongoing Tokyo ISPO. Okay, let's jump back into the actual readiness portion here. This is where things really begin to get fun. So we're going to talk about the different environments. There's three separate environments. There's the mainnet, pre-prod, and preview, which all have to be upgraded. We'll briefly review and touch on exchanges and where they currently stand in terms of readiness. And then there's also, of course, tooling, right? So keep in mind that all the current tools are all based off of Plutus V2. And with the introduction of Plutus V3, they all have to be upgraded as well. Um, towards the very end here, we'll briefly highlight wallet readiness, project readiness, and then governance readiness with the um, ICC, which is all currently being trained right now, if I'm not mistaken, in Colorado with the help of Charles. So again, it states here that Cardano node version 9.1 is the mainnet candidate for chain number one. And then we've got some of the core components that have to be upgraded in their current statuses. So um, the ledger has been upgraded. The consensus protocol, the consensus mechanism has, has been upgraded. The network, Plutus Core, the Cardano CLI, DB Sync, et cetera, those have all been updated. Now, in terms of the actual environments, I mentioned we've got three of them. We've got the mainnet, pre-prod, and we've got preview. Now, right now, uh, the majority, or at least, excuse me, the minority, 15% of the blocks that are minted right now on mainnet are coming from stake pools that are operating using Cardano node version 9.0. We've got a measly 4%. Of course, this will grow over time as more stake pool operators upgrade their pools um, to the new version where we've got 4% of the blocks minted right now on the main net coming in from stake pools operating using version 9.1.0. Okay, moving down, we've got the fact that Cardano currently holds or currently has 3,100 stake pool operators and we've got 81 of them that are currently ready. And then that translates basically to um, about 10% of the total staked ADA, which I believe is now ready or um, associated with pools ready for the chain hard fork upgrade number one. Now scrolling down, we've got exchanges, which again, even if the community gets ready, we can't do anything without Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, KuCoin, etc. also being ready. Because if you think about it, they hold a lot of liquidity and there might be people that want to move their assets from a centralized exchange to a um, non-custodial wallet, 
But if these exchanges haven't upgraded, that could potentially cause an issue with that process. So do keep that in mind as well. So we're waiting on Binance, Whitebit. We're waiting on HTX. We're also waiting on BitGet, P2B, Coinbase, and OKX. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we don't actually have any of them having started the process except for Coinbase. So as you'll see there at the very bottom, they hold 3.7% of the total liquidity required um, for us to actually kick off this upgrade. The biggest exchange being Binance, followed by Whitebit. I'm surprised I've actually never heard of Whitebit. So looks like I've got some more research and reading up to do there. So that said, we've really got to push these exchanges to begin the process because again, even if the community gets ready without their buy-in, the hard fork does not happen. Scrolling down in terms of tooling readiness. So we've got the Cardano serialization library, which is in progress in terms of upgrading to support the latest node version. And then we've got the Cardano multi-platform library that's been updated. The Cardano JavaScript SDK that's also been upgraded. And then we've got Lucid Palace and the Cardano transaction library, which are currently in progress. Now, looking at some of the tools, um, again, we've got a lot of them here still in progress. And then we've got some of the indexers here as well with Augmios being ready, Aura in progress, Scrolls in progress, DB Sync is ready, and then Carp is also ready. Now, I'm going to pick up the pace here a little bit as we are getting towards the bottom. We've got the wallet readiness. So as a viewer here, you probably have your own Cardano wallet. If you don't, I definitely recommend getting your own non-custodial wallet. And we've got Lace, which is officially ready. We've got Uroi, which is ready. The mobile version currently in progress. Nufi is ready. Eternal is ready. And then we've got Jiro, who's also ready. And then again, the list continues on with Vesper, Nami, Flint, Begin, um, Typhon, etc. currently in progress of updating. Now, in terms of hardware wallets, Treasure is supported. Ledger Nano S is not just yet. And then we've got the Nano S Plus, the Nano X, and the Stacks, which all are currently ready. Now, in terms of full node wallets, Daedalus is in progress, Ada Light's in progress, and then CNT Tools is also in progress. Now, when it comes to projects, this is where things also get tricky. We want to make sure that the majority of projects within the ecosystem are aware because, again, they've got smart contracts that are using Plutus V2 or Plutus V1, and there might be some incompatibility issues or upgrades that deprecate current features um, as a part of the new node release. So we've got the biggest dApps here, of course, which include MintSwap, SundaySwap, WingRiders, DexHunter, et cetera. And those statuses um, have not yet been reported. But as time goes on, we should begin to see more information here about all of these different builders and protocols in the ecosystem. Now, last but not least, we've got supporting governance initiatives where we've got updates on GovTool. We've got the Constitutional Committee portal and the DREP campaign platform, which also have to be upgraded to take advantage of the brand new hard fork. Now, at the very bottom here, we've got the seven members of the Cardano Constitution. Again, I won't break this all down here. I've talked about this in prior videos, but they all have been briefed as to what needs to happen for this first portion of the chain hard fork. So they are all quote unquote classified as technically ready. Now we've got the members who are representing the DREPs as a part of the initial DREP Pioneer program. And we've got over 150 of them, which have all basically been debriefed and are all considered as ready for moving forward with this chain hard fork. So that's literally it there. And uh, we've talked about quite a bit. Um, we've talked about the environments, the exchanges, tooling, wallets, and the different dApps and projects, as well as governance members or governance bodies that also have to be updated. Now, as we get ready to close out, I wanna briefly touch on the current state of the network. Again, keep in mind that 80% of the stake pools have to update in addition to 70% of the major exchanges. And so taking a look here at pool tool, we can see that we've got um, 14% of the incoming blocks right now being minted by pools running version 9.0. I mentioned that earlier. And then we've got about 5% reported from uh, stake pools operating using version 9.1, which is that mainnet candidate. Now looking here, node reporting version, these are the actual stake pools. So there is a difference between the blocks that are minted versus the actual stake pools that have upgraded to that node version. Um, shout out to Delphin Reyes for raising that here in prior videos. So here we've got 13% of all the stake pools within Cardano right now operating on version 9.0. And then we've got, interestingly, um, a huge amount here, 24%, which have already upgraded to version 9.1.0. So that'll bring us there to the end for today's video. Hopefully you guys found this to be helpful, breaking down 
um, just number one, the brand new node version, what's included within that Conway Genesis file, and then a brief breakdown of the state of readiness for the different shareholders or stakeholders um, that have to upgrade before the actual hard fork can take effect. Keep in mind, this is just the first hard fork of two. So once we go through this process, we'll have to do it all over again when we actually turn everything on for governance to take effect. That'll do it here for today's video. I hope you found it to be helpful or useful or just informational. And if you did, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. It's one of the easiest ways to support me here as a content creator. If it's your first time stopping by DAP Central and you want more content just like this, highlighting everything going on in Cardano, consider subscribing to the channel. And last but not least, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, then make sure to leave those down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.